It's a beautiful day today and a beautiful day for some horrifying relationship stories. Today's episode is going to be a compilation, but I am going to read some more stories at the beginning. So yeah, I hope you're ready, guys, and I hope you have a great time. I31 female found my boyfriend 28 male of two years on Tinder. Hi everybody, I found my boyfriend on Tinder last night after having a gut feeling something was going on behind my back. Sure enough, I found his profile almost immediately after making a fake profile and searching only for men in his age. I confronted him and he claims the app accidentally downloaded to his phone and that he was signed in automatically via Google, which is why he was showing up on Tinder. He swears up and down it's a big misunderstanding, but I think I just called him cheating. His Tinder profile also had his hometown listed and he he literally just moved back home two weeks ago. I don't think you can add the hometown unless you actually enter it yourself. How should I handle this? Wow, what a way to start the episode. Yeah, that's not an accident. It doesn't accidentally download onto your phone and accidentally sign you in with Google. Yeah, like the top comment says, when was the last time that you had an app accidentally install itself onto your phone, log you in and update your info all without you knowing? Yeah, me neither. Yeah, that's so awful. I hope you're okay, OP. Like this comment said under red, it's the audacity for me. Yeah, so awful and straight up lying too. My boyfriend's mum thinks that she is his wife and I'm the evil mistress. Boyfriend is male 23. I'm 25 years old female and my boyfriend is 23 years old male. Hey guys, so long story short, she's crazy. Her husband can't even stand being in the same room. There's no form of communication between them. My boyfriend plays the mediator between them. She's the foreign mum that knows nothing but cooking. She constantly force feeds my boyfriend and he'll freak out about cooking or hosting the family. She complains every day that nobody loves her or she'll die soon and baby's my boyfriend. The worst part, she begs me not to take her son away. He's my only happiness. Please stop taking him out of the house. Do it after marriage. She'll check where he goes, how long he's with me, and sends guilting messages. For the holiday, she was absolutely disrespectful and made me feel so bad about myself. She made sure I knew how lucky I was to be with her son. My boyfriend held my hand and she grabbed his other hand. He thanked me for my gift and she freaked out. My boyfriend does see her behavior and comments to her, but she doesn't understand. What do I do? Yeah, like the top comment says, this isn't a huge Job. Your boyfriend needs to set his own boundaries. Does he live with her still? He needs to move out yesterday. Yeah, he needs to be sorting this out, OP. It's definitely not your job. Yeah, and the comment under it. Your boyfriend needs to set boundaries and tell her to stop. Well, yeah, she's doing very unhealthy stuff. Your boyfriend is enabling this behavior. You need to tell him that he needs to draw a line. Personally, I'd never marry into something unhealthy and crazy like this. And OP said, thank you for your reply. He says he does set boundaries, but that she just ignores everything about them. She'll blame it on her English, but her controlling behavior behavior is on a different level. Yeah, wow, that's a hard situation. And the comment underneath, yeah, but the way boundaries work is that there's a consequence when somebody crosses it. Example, she crosses a boundary, he reminds her and leaves. If nothing seems to work, he needs to move out of her house and be independent because it's clear that his mum isn't stopping. Yeah, there's definitely more that your boyfriend could do, OP. That's a tough one though. The next one is called my wife, female 32, said that she preferred her deceased husband to me, male 35, during a heated argument. We've been married for three years and we have a one-year old child. She was a widow when we met, having lost her husband two years before we met. However, yesterday we had a very ugly argument about something trivial and she said that she preferred her deceased husband to me. She said this with so much anger and disdain that I was surprised and hurt. She apologized later and said that she didn't mean it, but I can't look at it the same way. I feel like I'm a substitute. She never acted like this in our previous two years of marriage. I'm considering preparing for divorce if this is going to be a pattern from now on. I really don't want that. Can I still salvage my marriage despite her clearly preferring her first husband. What do I do next regarding her? Yeah, I don't know, OP. There's not much that can be done after something like that. Like this comment says, people need to learn that words can't be unsaid before they say stuff like this. Sorry that happened, OP. Yeah, that's so awful. And like this comment says, how to destroy your marriage in less than 30 seconds. Yeah, that's not something you're ever going to forget about. These are so hard to read. I hope you're okay, OP. My 24 boyfriend, 26, needs me to wake up at the same time as him so that he can make the bed. Do I do what he says? Okay, so I feel like we don't even need to read this. Probably not. <laughs> boyfriend and I have been together for two and a half years and we live together in a place that we rent from my parents while we're at uni. Boyfriend needs me to wake up at 7.30 every day with him because it sets a good routine. He can make the bed and in his argument, you get better sleep with a sound schedule. Boyfriend doesn't wake up at 4am every day like I do. Wait a second, what? I wake up and I'm 
bolt awake, so it takes me a while to fall back to sleep, between 45 minutes and an hour. Something to do with those sleep cycles. When he wakes me up at 7.30, I don't wake up refreshed, but groggy and cranky. I complain but comply, and it causes arguments because he's adamant that I shouldn't sleep in, as he needs to start his day and make the bed. Oh, get the hell out of here. Is this a joke? Some days he doesn't wake up at 7.30. I've tried setting an alarm at 7.30 just to wake him up for his day, so I roll over and tell him at 7.30. He needs to get up because he's expressed to me that that's when he needs to, and he'll regret it otherwise. He tells me no. 10 more minutes, 5 more minutes, 1 more cuddle. When he does wake up properly, say 8 or 8.30, he's annoyed at me for letting him sleep so long and blames me for not being able to get up, because if I don't get up at 7.30 first, he can't either. So it's a mixed bag. Some days he can wake up at 7.30 and gets me up with him, or others he can't, and if I get him up, then it's my fault. My issue is, should I just do what he says and get into a routine of getting up at 7.30 with him? Will it help my sleeping issues and subsequent relationship issues? Wait a second, so why were you waking up at 4.30? Did it say? It said boyfriend doesn't wake up at 4am every day like I do. I wake up and I'm bolt awake, so it takes me a while to fall back asleep. Wait, so why are they waking up at 4 in the morning? But yeah, that's beside the point. You shouldn't even entertain something like this, OP. Why the hell can't your boyfriend just get up? That's such a BS that he has to make the bed. Like, what the hell? The top comment says, I'm not sure if he's mature enough to live with his girlfriend if he can't wake up and get up by himself. You're not his mother. He has his own alarm. And the last one out of the bed can make it. Yeah, the fact that they're so okay with messing up your sleep just so they can make the bloody bed. Oh, that's so infuriating. And yeah, like you said, OP, when you do wake up at 7.30 and you try to wake him up, a lot of the time he refuses. Oh, that's so frustrating. Yeah, these are some massive red flags, OP. Like, so controlling. And yeah, you're not his bloody mum. I think when you wake up at four in the morning, you should wake him up. Like, sorry, but this is when I like to start my day and I need to make the bed okay. So get up. And yeah, I don't understand why he can't get up and you make the bed when you get up or something. Or are they literally just trying to control your life and your sleep schedule and trying to decide what you should do? Yeah, that's really not good, OP. The red flag alarms are going off. The next one is called Girlfriend's 27 Female Family Always Makes Comments About What I, 28 Male Eat. I told her I was done eating around them, including not coming to Thanksgiving. My girlfriend and I have been together for three years. Our relationship is strong, except for a reoccurring issue where her family is difficult, and she's not always great at standing up to them or for me. I'm a large man, not fat or anything, just very tall. I play two recreational sports and I also bike a lot in my free time. As a result of this, I eat quite a lot. 95% of the time I eat healthy but in larger quantities, and the other 5% of the time I'll occasionally pig out. I'm not unhealthy. I've been to a doctor recently and he affirmed I'm in good health and I have a good healthy lifestyle. By all measures, weight, exercise, blood pressure, cholesterol, etc. So I know I'm doing everything right. However, my girlfriend's family constantly needs to comment on what and how much I eat. They live two hours away, so when we see them, it is typically us staying at their house for a whole weekend, where I'm at the whims of whatever the menu is. If I eat more than one serving of something, then the mum or the sister will make comments or whisper to each other about how I'm eating into their leftovers for the next day, or how it's unhealthy for me to have a second cookie or something. This is even if there's a ton of food, so I know I'm not eating their whole week's budget of food or anything. I've also tried bringing my own snacks, so I'm not infringing on their supply of food with my extra eating. But this doesn't work either. I'll sneak a granola bar or an apple or a bag of chips from my bag and they'll find out. I think they search the trash or something. And they let me know it'll spoil my appetite or ask whether the food mum made wasn't good enough for me. My girlfriend and I will also do our own activities outside of the house during the day sometimes. So I have occasionally had a stop at a fast food place if I need to eat some fries or chicken nuggets or whatever out of the house. Whenever we come back, the mum or the sister will make comments or ask if we ate anything else while we were out. And my girlfriend gets nervous and confesses because she feels guilty or doesn't like lying to them. So after three years of this, I get really sick of being attacked for the amount of food I eat when it barely impacts them. And I know I'm eating an okay amount. It's gradually gotten worse over time. My breaking point came last week when it was girlfriend's mum's birthday. So we met at a restaurant in the middle between us one night. I ordered a burger and fries while everybody else ordered salads. And immediately, girlfriend's mum, sister and aunt all started commenting about how the burger looked unhealthy. I stood up for myself and I said that I'd biked dozens of miles that week already, so I think I can treat myself to a burger. To which the sister said that one unhealthy thing can wipe out weeks of working out, which I dismissed. I was hoping that would be it. Wait a second, that's not true. You're not gonna erase all of the work that you did because of one bloody burger. Oh, they sound so frustrating. I was hoping that would be it, but every like 10 minutes somebody would make more comments, so I'm getting really annoyed. I eyeballed my girlfriend numerous times to be like, back me up here, and I barely got anything. Finally, the food came and my burger was perfectly normal. Not giant, not dripping with grease, not filled with unhealthy toppings, just a normal burger. But everybody was 
like, wow, that thing is enormous. You really shouldn't eat that in one sitting. It'll clog your arteries and you'll feel terrible after. Oh my God. Seriously, that thing is so unhealthy. I think I would die immediately. I decided I was done after that. I sneaked away to the bathroom and I stopped at the front of the restaurant to ask for a box and to pay my part. I came back to the table and announced that I was going to get going as I didn't feel well. And I asked my girlfriend if she wanted a ride home or if she'd figure out another way home. She got super embarrassed and said that she would come with me if I waited a few minutes. So I got in the car and I ate my burger in there while I waited for like 10 minutes for her to come. We left and she cried the whole way home. I felt bad that it hurt her feelings, but I'm at my limit and I told her I was done going to events where we eat food with her family. And if that means that I don't come with her when she visits her family, then that's just the way it has to be. I said I'd be skipping Thanksgiving at her parents this year. Since then, she's barely talked to me, but hasn't really fought me on it at all. I know it hurts her, but I have to stick up for myself here. I'm sick of being treated like some fatso who eats like garbage when I know I live a healthier lifestyle than any of them. I'm not even that mad at my girlfriend. Obviously, I would appreciate the backup, but I know she's scared of her family since they're all kind of bullies. So I'm just not going to allow myself to be present at these opportunities. Whatever fallout happens as a result of this is not my responsibility. Am I handling this right? Is there a nicer way I could have said everything or been gentler with my girlfriend? I don't want to hurt her feelings, but I have the right to protect myself if she won't. Oh, they sound awful, OP. Like, why do they feel like they even get to say stuff like this? And what, they don't realize they're doing it? Yeah, they sound insufferable. But like the top comment says, you haven't done anything wrong here, but instead of defending yourself by saying things like, I eat healthy, I exercise, could you flat out set a boundary and say, please stop commenting on my food? I'm an adult and I choose what I eat or something like that. Also, your girlfriend seems to be responding super passively here. It doesn't sound like y'all have fully talked it through if she's just saying stuff like, okay, or I understand. Y'all should be talking about things like her own experience with her family, her relationship with food with her family, how does she feel setting boundaries with them, and what will it take for her to do that, how it makes you feel and what will happen if they don't stop, etc. I think your girlfriend needs therapy and definitely couples therapy if you plan to stay together. Yeah, a million percent OP. And like this comment says, they sound extremely petty and I'm assuming envious and I wouldn't want to be around them either. Yeah, hell no. The next one is called long distance boyfriend 32 male invited me 31 female to visit and then acted like he didn't want me there. Do I leave? My boyfriend 32 male and I 31 female dated in the same city for six months until he got a job in a different state. We split up but then he reached out a few months later and we got back together but decided to figure out the details during a visit. I went to go see him and I was very excited. When I got there however, I was surprised to see that he was acting pretty aloof with me. He told me how happy he was in his new life, how he couldn't imagine living anywhere else and didn't understand why people didn't live in his new town. He also criticized me for calling his new town by an old nickname, pointed out somebody that he'd made out with during our break and said that she was needy and then joked about how many people he could hypothetically get with in his new town. It all made me feel like an outsider or an awkward interloper who didn't belong. I told him I was happy for him but also that his over the top happiness made me wonder whether he was trying to send me a message, either that he was over me or he wanted me to move out or something. He shut down and got really upset. He said that he was just acting normal and that if there was any weirdness that it must be something about me that was causing that. Oh, come on. He got upset that I would criticize him for his happiness and project my own insecurities of our relationship onto him unfairly. I told him that I guess I misread things. We haven't talked about it again, except when he told me that he talked to his friends and told me that they said he was not overly happy. And so again, I must be the one unfairly projecting my feelings. What do I do? Leave? Talk about it again? Definitely get out of there, OP. Like this comment says, he's moved on and checked out with you. He could have been man enough to say so. His feelings changed on you and he should have called you and told you not to come. Instead, you picked it up and you asked him and then he turns it around on you and blames you. He's immature AF and then he tells his friends, move on with your life. Yeah, definitely. It's not worth the trouble. And the comment under it, be done with it. He's already confided in his new friends about your disagreement, getting them to think that he's not being a jerk. Some guys don't want to be the bad guy, so they make you break up with them. Do it and don't ever look back. Best wishes. The next one is called my 32 female boyfriend 35 male. Violated my trust with a female co-worker to spite me. We've had our fights about a particular co-worker because they were spending a lot of time texting and FaceTiming outside of work. He is her boss and they work very close together. The last fight we had, it was agreed that he'd keep things professional from now on because the communication was excessive and I was not comfortable with it. I want to add, I'm not a jealous person. He has plenty of female friends that I don't think twice about or complain about. But I have specific reasons why their friendship outside of work made me uncomfortable. She's the only one I've ever asked him to limit contact with. Today, I found out that he'd spent the last couple of weeks talking to her on the phone outside of work for long periods of time. I calmly asked him about it and what was going on and why it was happening again after we agreed to set boundaries. His response was that we were fighting and he did it 
purposely to hurt me. Oh my god, what? Get rid of them, OP. He spent large amounts of time on the phone with another woman to make me feel hurt because we were fighting. Absolute trash. Get out of there. I feel like my trust has been completely violated. Yeah, it has. They spent time on the phone at late hours. We all work graveyard, but still. This was happening while they were both off, and I was at work none the wiser. Not once, but multiple nights over the last couple of weeks. I feel humiliated. I'm feeling like this is a deal breaker for me. This seems really inappropriate and immature. Like he went running to another woman for comfort. A woman he knows very well that I'm not comfortable with. I guess I'm just looking for some feedback as to whether I'm overreacting. Or this is just really crappy of him and I have a right to be upset. Any answers are appreciated. What do you think? What should I do about this? Is it a violation of our relationship? Enough to consider breaking up? Oh my god, definitely OP. Oh, I feel so sad for you. That's straight up shameful and disgusting of them. And obviously, get rid of them. You need somebody a lot better than this OP. Oh, that's so sad and aggravating. But I mean, seriously though, if somebody is willing to do this, you're 100% better off without them. Yeah, like this comment says, my husband of 35 years just did a few things that I didn't think were very cool. And when I asked him why he did them, he responded to make you mad and hurt you. So in turn, I packed his crap and I moved him out. If I were you, I'd kick him to the curb now before you waste any more of your life. Yeah, could not agree more. Good luck with this one, OP. The next one is called My Husband Kissed My Sister-in-Law. This is so messy. My 42 female husband, 45 male, kissed my brother's wife two nights ago while both were incredibly toxicated. My brother is or was my husband's best friend. My husband also works for my brother. We've been married four years but together for nine. My niece, 11 female, caught them mid-kiss. I don't know if things would have gone further if they hadn't been caught. I haven't talked to my sister-in-law but I have talked to my brother. He's inclined to believe that this was a one-time screw-up. I don't know what to believe. My husband cheated early on in our relationship. Oh god, about a year in, we did work through it but now I feel so stupid and I wonder if he's just a cheater and this is his pattern. He did tell me as soon as he was up. He hasn't apologized besides saying I effed up. He dumped all of his alcohol when I said if we stay together that's one of my conditions. He has a history of alcohol abuse. He scheduled an STD screening, again at my request and blocked my sister-in-law on everything. I'm absolutely sick about this. I'm devastated that my niece's world is forever changed. My husband is very close with all of the nibblings and that's all ruined. His friendship is ruined with my brother. His employment's compromised. Brother didn't fire my husband but it will be awkward and different. My friendship with my sister-in-law is over. I've still been working through feelings eight years after the first betrayal. I don't know if I have it in me to do the incredibly hard work again. I love him and I deserve so much better. Edit, I just sat down with my husband and I told him that I don't want to work things out. He said he understands and that I deserve better. I told him he was right. Thank you for the support, encouragement and affirming comments. I agree with the majority of them and I just needed the reminders. He's agreed to work things out amicably as far as finances and sorting everything while he also saves to move out. We don't share children but we each have children that will be hurt by the split. I don't hate him or her. I'm honestly just sad and disgusted. I'm not really effing angry anymore, at least right now. I imagine my feelings will vary as I grieve the loss of a partner. Edit 2. I messaged my sister-in-law. She apologized but it's very hollow and only after I finally confronted her. And she is lying about a message she sent my husband that he admits to deleting after they were caught. Doesn't make any sense why my husband would lie about getting and deleting a message. Husband says he can't fully recall what she sent, but that it was about getting caught. They're both full of crap, really. Oh, that's so sad, OP. I hope you're gonna be okay. I feel like we should read one more and then read something wholesome. I just found out that I'm disinherited. I, 35 female, just found out that my siblings, 41, are cut out of my parents' 70s will. They have millions and they plan on leaving it all to charity. My brother and I both pretty much live paycheck to paycheck. Let me be clear, we are in regular contact and we have a good relationship. Maybe not as good as I thought. I'm doing EMDR therapy right now. For some issues with how my mum has contributed to me feeling like love is conditional based on my weight and appearance. My dad has a history of severe rage episodes that had me constantly on edge. Honestly, I'm glad that they're in a good financial spot as they age and I don't have to worry about having money to help them in their old age. My dad has a family history of dementia and may need to be in a home or require at-home nursing care one day. However, my mum remarked to my brother that us kids are getting nothing as they plan on leaving millions to charity. That means that over the rest of their lives, they plan on hoarding their wealth and not spending it on themselves. I've previously told them I hope they spend their money while they're alive. They do not plan on doing this apparently. They plan on continuing to live well below their means and having millions left over when they pass. I know I'm not entitled to their money. It's not mine. If they had nothing to give me, I'd be okay with having nothing. Recently, however, they keep bringing up their net worth to me, which I've been confused as why. I feel like I was never good enough. My parents have said through actions and little digs and outright, your father and I are really disappointed in you that I'm a failure. Both of us are single without kids. I'm single because I haven't 
haven't found my person, not because I'm actively not wanting a relationship. My mum's really disappointed about not having grandchildren. I'm hurt and I feel like this is going to be their final way of saying that we aren't proud of you. I'm happy for them to leave something to charity, but like all of it, I really feel like a huge a-hole for being hurt over this. We are politically on the same side. They aren't super religious and they don't believe I'm going to go to hell or anything like that. I'm just kind of shocked and confused. I don't know how to navigate my feelings about this and I would love some outside perspective. On the one hand, I feel like they're sending me a hurtful message. On the other hand, I don't want to feel disappointed or hurt because it's not my money and I know they don't owe me anything. Edit. Oh my god, I was not expecting this response. Since I don't have a partner, I have nobody to lean on. I reached out to a longtime friend and she politely put up a boundary that she cannot support me because she has other things going on in her life. I feel like I'm being dumped by everybody I care about. So it's nice to get some support even if it's from internet strangers. Yeah, this comment's good. On the bright side, they can no longer hold their money over you as a way to control your relationship. They, pardon my language, blew their wad too soon and now they have no way to control your behavior. So congratulations, you're now free. You want to tell them they're being idiots? Do it. Want to tell them they should have saved enough money for end of life care because you're not going to be wiping their asses in 15 years? You're in the clear to do so. They've had their final say in their opinion of your financial worth to them and now you can work on realizing how much you mean to yourself and to people who love you. Like does your brother love you? Do you have friends or people you interact with regularly who admire some skill of yours? Are you pleasant to customer service people? And trust me, that puts more good into the world than anything your parents have done besides birthing you. Now is the time you can start your life. No more waiting on them to love you unconditionally or to see your worth. You can start fresh. Want to learn how to work with wood? Fly a plane? Take exploration trips around your town? You're free to do it. No more worrying about their approval. OP, I'm sorry you had such a pair of disappointments as your parents. You deserved better. But now you can start figuring out what kind of life you want to live now that you're free of their control. You have all of my best wishes for a fulfilling new life. Dad came to my apartment with toys for two young kids. I don't have any kids. Long time lurker, first time posting. I'm coming to you, the brains of Reddit that always find some angle that I never considered because my dad did something so wild yesterday and I'm spinning myself in circles about it. I'm trying to settle on an answer, but nothing really adds up. I'll break it down as thoroughly as I can, but my family has enough drama that it could fill 10 novels, so I'll be very to the point about it. So I'll reiterate again that I do not have any kids and I'm not married. I've never been married, never even moved in with a man. Here are the people I can think of that might be involved in this somehow. I have one brother, 27 male, and one sister, 22 female. My brother's in a long-term relationship with a nice woman, but they're both not interested in kids right now. My sister still lives at our mum's house. No kids, no long-term partner. My parents are divorced and my mum remarried. Dad stayed single. He lives with my uncle, 40s male, and my uncle's wife, 40s female. Stepdad is fine. They got married after I was out of the house. Sister reports that they're normal and beige together. He has no kids and has never met my dad anyway, so his family can be removed from the equation. Here's what happened. I have a crappy low rent apartment about 45 minutes away from my dad's house. It's on the third floor and you have to walk into the apartment building and up the flight of stairs to reach my door. Yesterday around 6pm my dad knocks on my apartment door. I wasn't expecting him so when I answered I was confused but pleasantly surprised. I greeted him normally and he gave me a side hug because he had a few toy boxes in his hands. Like Fisher Price toys for really young kids, even babies. I didn't say anything about them because I had no reason to assume they were for me. Like I didn't even register them in my brain. He looked totally normal. He wasn't breathing weird, wasn't sweaty, his pupils weren't huge. Nothing was off with him visually. No alcohol or smoke or anything, but my face wasn't too close to him. I said I was happy that he dropped by, but why was he here? He said he was in the area shopping when he saw these toys, which he then held up for me proudly, and wanted to give them to the girls. I said who? And he gave me two names that I didn't recognize. I remember my brain sorting through the roller decks of everybody I've ever met in our family Terminator style, and nobody matched. As I'm standing there trying to match the names to any kids I knew of, he peeks over my shoulder into the apartment and asks me if the kids are here or if they're with somebody called Mike again. Who is that? Apparently it's my husband. I must have been radiating confusion since my dad now is looking just as confused as I am, but still keeping up a good mood kind of vibe. I tell him I'm not married and I have no kids. At first he insisted I did, and when I reiterated that, he just kind of shook his head. At this point, I'm getting really concerned. Is my dad lost? Confused? Is he having some kind of breakdown? I ask my dad if he knows where he is. He starts to get frustrated really quickly and confirms that yeah, he knows where he is and who I am. I start to ask him questions I've seen in movies, like do you know what time it is or the year? And he just gets more and more angry. He starts shouting at me right in my face, yelling, you think this is funny? And are you trying to make me look stupid? There's bubbles of spit in the corners of his mouth. He went from zero to 100 so fast it genuinely kind of scared me and I retreated a bit into my apartment. When I backed away he took it as a personal offense and started screaming. Oh now you're scared? You're scared of me? Guess I'll just F off then. He storms off literally 
literally stomping his feet like a child down the hallway. I thought about chasing him, but he was so irate that I didn't think it was a smart move. The whole interaction was less than five minutes. I closed and locked my door and I immediately started making phone calls. I called my mum, my uncle and siblings. Nobody has any idea what just happened. I did ask my mum and sister if I was the crazy one and did have children I forgot about. They confirmed that I certainly didn't. Uncle says that dad left the house around 4pm to run errands in my area. So yeah, that part was true. I told him what happened and he said he'd try to figure out what's going on and call me with updates. It's tomorrow morning and I haven't heard anything back. I spent all night trying to figure this out. Here are my theories. He has another kid somewhere that none of us know about and that kid is married and has two kids. But if that's true, why my apartment? Did he confuse me with his other hidden kid? He confirmed he knew where he was, so I'm not sure. Did he drive here on autopilot? He'd have to get out of his car and walk all the way up here though, which should have been enough time to snap out of it. The anger might have come with him realizing what he'd done and panicking, but it would have been so easy to make up a lie about what happened. Maybe he had some kind of mental breakdown. This was my first thought, but he looked and acted so normal. He drove out here and went to a store and purchased items without any issue. So he must have been in a decently sound mind to do that. Maybe he was somewhere else in his mind. I considered the idea that he was maybe in the past and thought I was somebody else, but again, he confirmed where he was and who I was, and I didn't recognize any of the names as anybody in our family. Maybe he did this on purpose for some reason. I have no idea why he'd do this. Our whole family loves to stir the pot, but this is extreme and makes him look bad, which is definitely out of character. If he were to manufacture drama, he'd want to make himself look good. So this would be a drastic switch in his dramatics. Maybe sympathy? Maybe he's going to play this up as some kind of stress breakdown? As far as I know, his job doesn't squeeze him too much. He's had the same position for years and he's pretty happy with it. The most he complained about was having to work overtime every once in a while. Or maybe he's developing dementia. I know early onset dementia could be the case, but he's just barely 50. Yeah, he's getting older, but not that old. And he's never shown any signs of cognitive failure up to this exact point. This is a huge escalation from nothing. If anybody else has any idea what's happening here, please share. My uncle has yet to call me back and my siblings can't get through to my dad's phone. I think it's dead. I left a voicemail and text on my uncle's line, but who knows if he's seen them. I don't have any authority in his life. The only one that does is my brother and he lives in another state, so it's not like he can help much. What the hell happened to my dad? Oh my god, I'm so sorry, OP. What an awful situation. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but something definitely is. Oh, that's scary and sad. And yeah, pretty much everybody's saying it in the comments, but he needs to see a doctor ASAP. Yeah, hopefully he can get the help that he needs. Oh, that's so scary, OP. I hope it turns out okay. What a wild start to the episode. The top comment says something is seriously wrong with your dad. Even if he does have a secret kid somewhere, confusing you for them like that is already a bad sign. Him somehow concocting a family that you have and being that certain of it, along with the mercurial mood, is a really bad sign. I won't speculate as to what is wrong, but your dad needs to see a doctor yesterday. And OP said, agreed, but I don't really know how to make him go. I don't have any medical authority over him and I think calling the police would be a bad move that might destroy any trust he has in me. Like having him dragged to a hospital after a mental breakdown has to be bad for his mental state, right? Yeah, that's such a tough one, OP. I hope things have gotten better since this post was made, or at least that he's getting help. The next one is called, my husband was caught turning our camera around when I'm not home. Am I reading too much into this? My husband and I, aged 27 and 29, male and female, just had a baby and don't live in a very good neighborhood, so I installed a camera pointing to our door and windows. I told my husband and I showed him where it is, so I'm not hiding anything. I'm in Utah with our baby visiting family. He couldn't get the days off. And I put up the camera to check the battery life since my dogs are home alone. And I noticed the lens wasn't showing anything. When I pull up the events, it shows my husband turning the camera around, so nothing can be seen. I'm dealing with PPD being only three months since having my baby. So my mind is all over the place trying to understand why he'd do this. Am I overthinking this? Yeah, I don't know. That's definitely suspicious, OP. I think OP must have deleted their account too because I can't see any updates or anything. Like, yeah, of course, it doesn't immediately mean something bad. But yeah, you definitely need to ask him about it. Like, yeah, definitely suspicious. The top comment says, first things first, ask him, don't accuse. Just ask him. He's the only one who knows why he did it. Hey, I was checking the battery life on the camera since the dogs are home alone. And I noticed the lens wasn't showing anything. I looked at the events just in case something happened and I noticed you turned the camera. Is there a reason? And OP said, thank you. This sounds like something I would say too. I'm not a confrontational person, but I also don't like to drag things out. My heart is just so confused. We just welcomed our first baby together, so it's hard to believe that he'd be unfaithful now. Yeah, once again, I don't know if there's any updates here, but hopefully everything was okay. My husband, 26 male, cheated four years ago, and I, 25 female, just found out today. Oh, God. I found out today that my husband cheated on me four years ago. I was using his phone when a message from somebody saved under a woman's name popped 
popped up and I opened it. All it said was, hey, it was the first text since 2020. I read further back into the chat thread and I found out that one month into our relationship, he started talking to this girl. Not really just talking, but more like a full-blown relationship. It was full of I love yous and plans for dates. I decided to dig a little bit deeper into his other text messages at the time and I found four other women he was also talking to. Those were just sex, but he was in a relationship with me, her, and was also sexting other women all at the same time. And I'm wondering if it's still going on. How do I get the truth from him? Just from looking at these texts, it seems like he isn't cheating now. However, it also appears that some things may have been deleted and I can't see them now. We have had a couple of fights recently where he was accusing me of cheating, even though I've given him no reason to suspect that and it feels like he's projecting. Yeah, 100%. I do not want a divorce, but I also don't know where to go from here. What do I do? Also, how do I get the whole truth? Wait, so you want to stay with them, OP? Why? Nah, like, don't do that. Yeah, like this comment says, you're in for a rude awakening if you think you're going to get the full truth from a serial cheater. These types never admit the full truth. He's going to trickle truth you, manipulate you, maybe even add a dash of gaslighting. What would the full truth even do for you? I'd bet everything he's still cheating. Probably just got better at hiding it. That's why he's projecting. Guilt. He knows that if he's been sneaking around all this time, you could easily be doing it too. Dude's been cheating on you your entire relationship and you don't want to divorce him? You don't think you deserve better? Nobody should be with somebody who betrays them. Oh, it's such an awful situation. But yeah, that's right. You deserve better, OP. It won't ever go away. And what he does now doesn't even really matter. You can't undo stuff like that. And yeah, you deserve to be with somebody who isn't going to do that to you. Like somebody that's going to betray you like this. Don't worry. You can do better, okay? Like you can do a lot better. Oh yeah, that's so gross. Like yeah, not my relationship, but oh my God, why would you want to stay with somebody like this? The next one is called my roommate's boyfriend will not go home. I don't know how long this will be, so please bear with me. My roommate, 21 female and I, 20 female, got sick around the end of February and she told me that her boyfriend, 19 male, was coming over to take care of her while she was sick. However, it's now the beginning of April and he's still here. She's been making excuses for him, such as not wanting to travel during the school week. He stayed with her through spring break so she wouldn't be alone. His family was out of town, etc, etc. He also has been an incredibly rude house guest. He's eaten my food, left all my dishes dirty in the sink for days on end, and uses said dishes to ash in, despite having multiple ashtrays around the house. Consequently, while I was visiting home for spring break, I found the both of them going through my closet, and I only found that out because I'd set up a camera in my room. I don't feel like I can trust my roommate anymore, as I feel like she's been taking advantage of me in this entire situation, as boyfriend has no job, and she's been looking since September. I can't afford to pay for another person on the utilities. No, of course not, OP. Yeah, like this comment says, let your landlord know that your roommate has found a replacement for you, and you want off the lease, and then grab your stuff and move out. Yeah, well, you don't want to be living with them anyway. Boyfriend that just showed up and never left. How rude can people be? The next one is called I female 28 walked in on my fiance male 34 kissing his co-worker female 30. So we all work together in a hospital unfortunately. They're paramedics and have worked together longer than I've been at the hospital. I knew my fiance when I was still in medical school about six years ago but he moved so our relationship ended. I ended up joining the residency program at the same hospital where he was working and we ended up reconnecting and after two and a half years we're getting married. We're actually planning to elope as we're not the type to want a massive fuss. His colleague female 30 Sam and he had a fling of some sort about nine months before I returned, but it finished before I had returned. So I decided to drop lunch into him before I started my shift yesterday, as they've been slammed working as we all have. I'm stopped by his manager as I walk in. I talk to her, wish her a good shift and give her an energy bar, and she points me in the direction of my soon-to-be husband. However, when I see him, his lips are locked with Sam's. I left, he ran after me, trying to tell me that he didn't kiss her back. She shocked him, he loves me and can't wait to marry me. I really want to believe him, but I also have respect for myself, and I won't let them make me look stupid. I stayed with my friend last night. Do I trust his word or no? Edit, I've asked her for an explanation and I'm going back home. He's being very honest and has requested CCTV footage for me to see. Admittedly, I've been insecure over Sam before. She doesn't particularly like me, but he did look very rigid when the kiss happened. I will update later. Edit, so I went home last night and I talked to him. He was very open and let me check his phone, laptop, etc. Even showed his GPS history. I did feel a bit overbearing. Sam texted me back. She apologized and admitted that it was 100% her. She said that she'd tried to go back to their old flirting ways, but he wasn't reciprocating. She said she was jealous of me because the relationship we have is so different from whatever they had, which was mainly physical, and that she was fed up with hearing about his beautiful, smart, long-lost love for Yonsei, and how lucky he felt that we were able to reconnect. She said that as I'd mentioned in the comments, she saw or heard me coming and decided to try and make him look bad. She said that when their manager sees the footage, it'll back up her account 
of what happened. She said she's sorry and that her actions were pathetic and that she'd asked to be reassigned to another paramedic to partner with and that she would leave us alone but it's only us for Ian not to report her as she would lose her career. He said that it's my choice if I want him to report her he will but I'm leaning towards just leaving it be. As long as she keeps her distance I don't want her losing her career. I'm just happy to know that me not immediately jumping to the worst conclusion with Ian was the right choice. Also for those saying it's fake I don't know what to say. Sorry if you feel like that but it's an anonymous reddit post. I don't have to prove anything. Also for those saying it's not how hospitals work. Not every country is the US. I won't say which country we're from but we're European. Thank you for the advice. Yeah god I don't know. I'm assuming it's all okay now. Yeah I don't know what to say about this one. What a gross situation. Yeah hopefully that's all true and everything's okay. As always I'm so excited to read your comments guys. The next one is called my 23 female boyfriend 24 male judges me for relaxing on the weekends. My boyfriend and I have been together for two years. We both work full time. I work 48 hours a week and although it's not a physically taxing job I'm usually exhausted after work. I also have little to no energy on the weekends and I can only manage to do chores. I like to spend my weekends relaxing but my boyfriend thinks that you have to be productive every minute of every day otherwise you're just a lazy unambitious person. Nah dude. <laughs> for example I was still in bed at 10 a.m. this morning and he was judging me for it. Nah 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 nah. <laughs> I also struggle with depression and anxiety and sometimes I'm unable to bring myself out of bed in the mornings. He does not have any mental health issues nor does anybody in his close circle from what I know so he doesn't understand how difficult it is to deal with it. I'm not sure if this is the reason but I work a basic entry level job with a low salary so he thinks that because I have an easy job I shouldn't be this tired. I was proud of myself for getting this job because I wasn't able to work a few years ago due to my mental health issues but I feel like he's not proud of me or doesn't think I'm enough. How should I approach him about this? Oh no nah, this is so annoying OP. Why the hell does your boyfriend think they're so much better than you? And also that attitude is so BS. It's stupid to feel like you have to be busy doing something all the time. Being productive doesn't mean doing something every second of every day. It means that when you do something you get it done and if you do what you set out to do and then you chill out for the rest of the day that's super productive. Yeah no that's a stupid attitude. Sorry you have to deal with that OP. There's no point being busy for no reason and that's pretty much what it sounds like they're talking about. I get up at like 10 in the morning but that does not equal lazy and unproductive. This one's definitely frustrating because I sort of know the attitude that the boyfriend has and it's this sort of attitude where you have to be moving like every single second. You always have to be doing something. You have to be hustling all the time but that doesn't equal being successful either. Like guaranteed you find somebody super successful. They would do what they know they have to do and when that's done they do whatever they want to do. This toxic attitude of being like oh you always have to be hustling and stuff which it sounds like they're getting from somewhere and like projecting onto you OP. It doesn't equal anything good. Yeah I don't know that's a hard one. Like obviously I don't know but it feels like he's insecure or he doesn't feel like he's doing enough or doing well enough or something because of that stupid sort of toxic attitude and then all of those insecurities are getting projected onto you OP. And yeah who's to say what you're doing isn't productive. Good luck with this OP. The next one is called fiance 26 male has invited his best friend 25 female on his family vacation instead of me 25 female. Oh god this one already sounds bad. Hi y'all I'm really struggling with trying to understand this situation and I would appreciate some insight outside of my immediate friends and family. Throwaway account for privacy purposes. For some backstory I met my fiance we'll call him D at the tail end of my freshman year of college. We were friends for a couple of months before finally admitting that we had feelings for each other and we've been inseparable ever since. He's known his girl best friend S since his early years of high school. D introduced me to S early on in the relationship as she also attended the same university as us. I always trusted D so I never had a problem with their friendship. I have platonic male friends that I still keep in contact with so having an issue with it would be hypocritical in my eyes. I even developed a friendship with S over the years so getting to understand her on a personal level has also made me feel more secure in their closeness. I got engaged to D this summer after years of dating and I personally believe that we have a wonderful and deep love. We typically have very healthy communication and even if we don't see eye to eye on things we tend to come to a middle ground eventually. Fast forward to now his family typically does a vacation every spring break. The past few years I've not been invited because only close friends or spouses are allowed to join in. Now I admittedly have felt a tad bit hurt by this in the past but I've always let it go because it's not my family vacation and I assumed that he had no hearsay in who he could bring along unless they met the requirements. So you can probably imagine how excited I was thinking that perhaps I could tag along this year to spend some time getting to know his family much better and getting to spend some extra time with him that isn't the apartment or city that we live in. Friday night when we came home from work he started to casually bring up how his family picked a certain beautiful east coast beach as their destination 
vacation for this year's family vacation, which by the way got me so excited because I thought he was about to segue into inviting me. Rather though, he mentioned that this year he was bringing S along to the family vacation. I think he could see the confusion and devastation on my face because he immediately started to say that he wanted to bring me, but his family has known S for much longer than they know me. Oh god, no. What are you doing, dude? Red flag OP. And that they love her so they don't mind paying for her to go on vacation with them. But what, they don't love you, OP? Their own partner? Nah, screw that, OP. S has also had a tough year with her grandfather passing away, so he wants to take her on a trip to make her feel better and get her mind off things. I was genuinely so shocked and so hurt that I excused myself to the bathroom, locked the door, and I sobbed my eyes out. The next morning, D came and spoke to me, saying that he was sorry, but this vacation probably won't be that fun anyway, since my teen cousins are coming, and that he would make it up to me by taking me out on a weekend trip sometime during the summer. I try to explain to him that it hurts that he's putting another woman above me, his fiance. Yeah, OP, that's so awful. Even if it is for a not fun family vacation, I've never been able to attend one of them before. And finally, just when I think I'm about to be included, I'm just not. The vacation will be a week long and I'm already starting to feel insecure that he's picked another woman to go on a tropical family vacation with. I truly can understand how he wants to be a good friend and be there for his best friend while she's grieving a loss. But also at the same time, I could never imagine inviting one of my guy friends on a family vacation over my fiance. It perplexes me, I suppose. I'm so confused on what to do or how to handle the situation. I want to respect his decision because I can appreciate that he can love and cherish another woman platonically. But at the same time, I feel so betrayed that while he's on this family vacation with another woman, I'll presumably be sitting at home feeling extremely left out. I've also been battling the urge to look through the messages with her. I don't want to invade his privacy, but I can't help but begin to think that if you invite another woman to a vacation with you, there's probably more than just friendship in the pot. I don't really know how to bring up any sort of grievance I have about this without sounding like I'm jealous or clingy. Oh no, OP. And quite frankly, I'm not even sure if I should be upset. Should I be concerned that he invited her over me? Or do y'all think I'm overreacting? Hell no, OP. I think you deserve a better partner. Screw that. A million percent. And you don't sound clingy or jealous bringing it up. Like, hey, fiance, what the hell are you doing, dude? You're taking somebody that isn't me. That's so aggravating, OP. Like, you've never been invited to this sort of stuff. And the first time that he is going to go with somebody, you're not even invited. And he's going with this other woman. Oh, nah. Like this comment says, hell no. That would be an absolute deal breaker for me. You're his fiance. You are part of the family. If his family don't accept you, then that's a problem he needs to address. Not just switch you out for someone they like more. Yeah, and the way they were talking about the friend as well. Ew. How are they going to get to know you if you're not invited to things that would actually help them get to know you? If he wanted to invite both of you because she's had a hard time, then fine. She can come along as a family friend, but you should not be excluded by saying that you're not invited to a family vacation, but she is. He's being very clear that you're not family and she is. You are not his family. I couldn't continue knowing that. Yeah, and the fact that he doesn't feel bad. Oh, that's so aggravating. And also, what are the family thinking? None of them feel like this is unfair on you. Oh God, I'd be running away from people like this. We have an update to the post that we read in the last episode. Update, my dad came to my apartment with gifts for two young kids. I do not have any kids. Hi everybody, I wanted to wait until I had more information to post an update, but a lot of people were seriously worried about my dad and I, so I wanted to let everybody know what happened. I finally found my dad. My uncle took him to the hospital the night of the incident, and was, for reasons I'll get into, ignoring our calls and texts. Anyone who bet on head injury and drugs, you're correct. You can cash out your chips at the front counter, haha. -ha. There was no second family. I wish there was. My dad would just be in drama-related trouble and not medical trouble. He's got a massive concussion and serious brain damage. Oh, God. Did not expect that. Doctors don't know how he managed to even drive to my apartment safely. They think he was on autopilot since he takes that freeway nearly every day. The phantom kids are his co-workers. His brain somehow blended the details of his co-worker's life into his own. Co-worker has a daughter who's married and has two kids. And the memories of being told about the girls mashed together with memories of his own daughter. Doctor says this is pretty common with head injury. My uncle did find my dad and took him to the hospital. He did drive out to my area and scour the place looking for my dad and eventually found his car outside Walmart around 10pm. Couldn't find him outside but did find him out behind the building harassing an employee for a cigarette. He grabbed my dad and kind of dragged him into the car and took him to the hospital. He just decided not to update anybody because he didn't want to stress us out. I don't believe him at all. I think my uncle is responsible for what happened to my dad and was avoiding us out of guilt. After I posted here, I went to work and once I was clocked out, I went to my dad 
and uncle's place. Dad and uncle's cars were gone. Only my aunt was there. I went and knocked, but nobody answered. People in my last post mentioned carbon monoxide poisoning. And I was kind of freaking out thinking that my aunt was just dead inside. So I went around the house testing the doors and windows to see if I could get in. The back door was unlocked, so I just let myself inside and I looked around. Totally empty. I even checked underneath the bed since a couple of people mentioned my dad could be paranoid or scared and hiding. My aunt has this giant purse and it wasn't there, which confirmed to me that she was probably with my uncle. I went back and I sat in my car and I started calling any hospitals and jails that came up on Google Maps. Nobody had any answers and just said that he wasn't there. I even called the police for a wellness check just to see if maybe they could call around hospitals and get a different answer. But I waited until 11pm-ish and literally nobody came. No police, no family, nobody. I drive back home and I try to get some sleep. Next day I call out of work and I spend the day driving around my area trying to find my dad. Couldn't track him down so I started calling hospitals again. There's three in my area and while two of them gave me no he's not here sorry. One of them got really nervous over the phone and said I'm not supposed to give out patient information. I got suspicious. I kept on asking and she just got more and more flustered. I hung up and I drove my ass over there and I saw my uncle's car in the parking lot. It was kind of late. The sun was down but I wasn't keeping track of time. So there were only like five cars in the visitor area and his was one of them. I don't have any words to describe what I was feeling but it was mostly just a rage. Like what the hell? Hello? He's been here the whole time. I went in and I tried to get the receptionist to let me see my dad. She didn't really want to let me and I'm not proud of it but I started freaking out. I slammed my hands on the desk. I screamed. I knocked over a magazine rack. I guess my tantrum made somebody go talk to my uncle and aunt since she came out of the waiting room and she told the receptionist it was fine to let me through. If she didn't look so tired and sad I was gonna maul her but the look on her face made me calm down if you can call it that. Long story short she took me to my dad's room. He looked terrible. None of you know my dad but he's a beast. He's 5'11 with massive smile lines and bright shining eyes. He's my dad so I'm biased but he's always so full of life. Laying in that hospital bed he looked dead already. Sunken eyes, lifeless and droopy face. He looked empty. I was able to talk to him for a bit but he was totally out of it. He had to be reminded who I was several times and kept forgetting where he was and why he was there. And just like my dad when I get upset I get angry. I practically dragged my uncle out of the room into the hallway for an explanation. After like 20 minutes of him making excuses and beating around the bush. Another reason I think he's guilty he told me what happened. Apparently Monday morning my dad fell getting out of his car and cracked his head really hard against the driveway. He got up and everyone thought he was fine so they just went inside the house as normal. After a while he had a headache so they gave him a couple of prescription painkillers to ease the pain. Apparently that worked so they let him continue his day as normal. They only got concerned when I called and told my uncle what happened. He kept being so weird and evasive that I know there's more but I couldn't wring his stupid neck in the hospital hallway so I let it go. Here's what I think happened. I know my uncle and dad and I know the history of this stupid family like the back of my hands. I think my dad and uncle got in a fight over something and dad was either pushed down or hit in the head by my uncle. The altercation gets resolved somehow and they go back to normal but my dad's head still hurts. I learned at the hospital from the doctor that there were enough painkillers in his body to numb a horse so I suspect that my aunt and uncle just kept feeding him painkillers so they wouldn't need to take my dad to the hospital and admit what they did. I pressed my aunt about the painkillers and she eventually halfway admitted that they weren't exactly allowed to have them at all. I suspect that she bought them off somebody else. They're likely addicted and I just didn't know. I'm almost 100% sure this is their fault. If they'd taken my dad to the hospital as soon as he hit his head, he would probably be okay. I'm staying at the hospital now and my aunt and uncle have left. Doctor says to not get my hopes up about my dad. But when doctors say that, it always means he'll actually be okay, right? That's how it always goes. They tell you that your family member probably won't make it, but they always prove them wrong. I'm sorry, but the rest of this is just going to be me venting. You know what really gets me? I could handle all this. I could understand it. My uncle and aunt have always been less than reliable. I can believe that this could come from them. The hardest part is the lack of concern from literally anybody but me. I had to blackmail my brother, drama from a year ago, to even get him to agree to fly out. My mum doesn't care. Dad's family doesn't care. My sister kind of cares, but she doesn't really want to help or even come support me in the hospital with him. I'm just so shocked that I'm the only one here for my dad and he doesn't even know who I am at the moment. I have to take time off work, but it's not like my job gives me paid time off. I'm screwed. My dad is screwed. My life is screwed. Why am I the only one dealing with this? My brother is the only one of us with time and money to help fix it. And I had to threaten him just to get him to come back home. I wish I had chased my dad when he left my apartment. I was afraid of him, but I'm even more afraid now. My dad's probably going to die and I trusted the jackass who killed him with helping him. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with everybody? Why doesn't anybody give a crap about my dad? Why doesn't anybody give a crap about me? I could have been a better daughter to him. I could have visited more and called more, involved him in things more. I could have chased him when he left my apartment. I might have gotten hurt, but I would rather get hurt than be sitting in a hospital room with my unconscious and probably dying father. I'm so stupid and I'm sorry, dad. I don't even know what to say. I'm so sorry about all of this 
OP. The top comment says, yo, definitely get the police involved. Even if the story is true that he fell, they still pumped him up with pain medications when he couldn't advocate for himself. It's like being roofied at a bar. I hope your dad pulls through. I'd cut contact with your aunt and uncle. As a daughter, you have more rights to your dad's care than they do. Ban them from the hospital. OP said, on this, a couple of cops just came to talk to me and get a statement. They seem to be taking me seriously and took my contact information. I told them everything about what happened when dad came to my apartment and what my uncle said and how I didn't believe him and I gave my version of things. I tried to give as much context as I could. I think they did believe me, but who knows? They said they'd come around again soon. I'm not really sure what happens from here, but I'll be pressing for more information when they come back. The next one is called considering leaving my fiance over comments that she made about my cousin. I'm 30 male, my fiance is 27 female, my cousin is 30 female. My cousin and I are very close. Our moms are identical twins, so we grew up more like siblings. My cousin is married and has been for like seven-ish years, and they've been trying to have a baby for six-ish years. They do have a daughter via adoption, but they have no biological children. She has miscarried several times, and I know this to be a fact because I was the one called to clean up the blood before she made it home, so she wouldn't have to see it. She struggles with it a lot, and the mention of anybody being pregnant upsets her. She smiles about it to them, but she normally cries when it's just us talking. I've done my best to be there for her because she's like a sister to me. She miscarried again back in December and ended up having to have several surgeries, hopefully to fix the problem. I know she's been seeing a specialist and she is hopeful. However, she didn't say much to me about anything. She didn't call, which was unusual, but I just assumed that she didn't want to talk about it at the time. My fiance and I were talking about miscarriages and fertility stuff because one of her friends had miscarried and my cousin came up. My fiance laughed and said that my cousin has never actually miscarried. She's just making it up for sympathy and trying to get attention. What? My cousin hates attention and people feeling sorry for her. She says that it makes her feel really awkward. Only a few people in the family know about her miscarriages. Nobody extended knows, just us, my parents, hers and me, and our grandparents. She's never once tried to get attention. I asked my fiance why she would say that, and she said my cousin obviously wants my attention, and that's why she's always crying to me and nobody else. She also said that she has confronted her about it. My cousin never told me my fiance had ever said anything to her about it. My fiance also said a few other really awful things about my cousin that were creepy, implying that we'd had a sexual or emotional relationship. What? I was absolutely disgusted because again, she's like my sister. But not only that, we are very related. That's gross. Anyway, now that I've been thinking about it, I've remembered several odd times that my fiance has been rude to my cousin and has pulled me away from talking to her at pretty much every family event. This doesn't sit right with me and I'm completely rethinking my relationship. I'm not sure if we should have another discussion or not or if I should just end it because I don't know if I can trust her around my cousin again. My cousin's been hurt enough. She doesn't need somebody mocking her or telling her that she's lying. I'm not sure what to do here. I'm not sure if we should have another conversation about it or if I should just move on. This whole thing doesn't sit right with me. Yeah, that's revolting, OP. The top comment says, this is absolutely worth breaking up over. It's weird and gross enough that she's jealous of your cousin. It's weird and gross enough that she thinks that your cousin is lying about having miscarriages. And it's absolutely hateful and unhinged that she's confronted a grieving woman to accuse her of lying about having them. Yeah, that's wild. There's a comment here that says, I have to agree with the consensus. She is in plain English, a heartless biatch. It's bad enough to imply that you have an inappropriate relationship with your cousin, but to go to her and tell her that she's lying about something so traumatic is unexceptionable. You need to get rid of her and then go to your cousin and beg for her forgiveness and tell her you had no idea she did what she'd done. And OP said, I was planning to go see her tomorrow and apologize. I also want to know what exactly was said to her. I don't know if she thinks I knew it or not, or if she thinks I had something to do with it too. Yeah, wow, how awful. It's an intense episode today. The next one is called My Husband 30 Male Intense to Ask Me 29 Female to Open the Marriage. How do I tell him I have no intention of letting him near my future baby, or me for that matter? A throwaway account because my husband knows my Reddit handle. I've also changed names just to diminish the chances of him finding me. He's not abusive, but I have no intentions of letting him find out what I intend to do before I do it. I guess I'm looking for advice on what to do. Victor and I met five years ago and we've been married for almost three. When we were dating, I told him that under no circumstances would I condone cheating. If he cheated and I found out about it, that's it. I'd cut off all contact and he'd never see or hear from me again. If we were married and or have kids, we'd only go through lawyers. He told me he was happy I had standards and the past five years were great. Not perfect, but I believed we were happy. We decided to try for a baby last year. My due date is in 16 weeks. I was over the moon happy and I believed he was too. He told me when we were dating that he didn't care if we had only boys, but he always wanted to have at least one little girl for him to pamper and spoil. When we learnt the baby was a girl, he cried and told me I was the best wife in the world. That was until last weekend. Victor went out to get groceries but left his phone in our room by accident. I decided to take it down to the kitchen so he wouldn't be scrambling looking for it when he got home. 
home. As I was walking to the kitchen, a text message popped up. It was from his work wife, Alicia, 31 female. It said, quote unquote, so the plan's on. I don't know why, but something about this made me suspicious. Victor's the type of man who uses the same passcode for everything, so I was able to access his phone. Well, I checked the messages, and I learned that he intended to ask me to open the relationship so he and Alicia can start going out. What? I've never met an open relationship that's ever worked out, and a number of people I've talked to have told me that an open relationship is usually because somebody is already cheating and wants to continue guilt-free or has somebody in the wings. And it's clear that if he and Alicia aren't sleeping together, they certainly intend to. I was able to get screenshots of the text messages going back as far as I could and I sent them to myself. I've also packed a bag and headed to my older brother's, Oliver 32 Male's house. He opened his doors to me when I told him what happened. As I didn't want Victor to know that I know, I just left a note saying that Oliver had an unexpected emergency and I headed over to help him. Victor asked me to stay in contact and that he loved me. I have an appointment with a lawyer in a few days. Honestly, I feel disgusted. This man knew the whole time that I'm not going to play these kind of games and he went ahead and decided to mess around and find out. But I don't want to play my hand just yet. Maybe I'm being petty, but I want to catch him as off guard as he caught me off guard. I don't want my baby to be around a man who believes it's okay to make a promise to be loyal and faithful, but then decide to break it to chase some tail. What kind of message does that send to a child? Especially a girl. I don't care if he wins father of the year. He still thinks it's okay to treat the woman he vowed to love, cherish and honor for the rest of his life like a side piece. Victor has been trying to call and text me asking if I'm okay. Oliver has been texting him back as me because I don't think I can even talk to Victor without blowing my top. What do I do now? How do I tell him that not only did he choose Alicia over me, but I don't want my baby to grow up believing this kind of thing is okay? Yeah, like the top comment says, what do I do now? You speak to an attorney and follow their advice. Then you get some therapy to prepare yourself to co-parent because in most instances, even a cheating spouse doesn't lose all access to their child. Yeah, wow. Said it was an intense episode after the last post. It's becoming an even more intense episode. I'm so sorry you have to deal with this OP. So gross and heartbreaking. Yeah, and like this comment says, you cool down and you don't do anything until you speak to a lawyer. You also research co-parenting because like it or not, that's the boat for the next 18 years. And the parental alienation game will mess up a kid quick. Yeah, 100%. Oh, so sad. The next one is called My 26 Female Fiance 29 Male. Cancelled the wedding one week before the ceremony. What do I do next? My 26 Female Fiance 29 Male cancelled our wedding one week before the ceremony. He'd said he'd been having a build up of a nervous feeling over the past three months and he finally decided that he can't go through with it. He said he feels like getting married would mean that he's trapped for the rest of his life. He decided he wanted a short break so I went to stay with my parents. Four days later he texted me asking if I could come home and that he misses me and that he loves me. He's arranged to see a psychologist and counsellor. Chiefly he wants to figure out one, why this happened. Two, does he want to marry me at all or just not want to marry me? Three, does he still want to have kids at all or is it just that he doesn't want to have kids with me? I thought it might be worth mentioning that he has always told me that he wanted a family previously and this is all coming as a surprise for me. For context, we've been dating for the past three and a half years. How should I be feeling about this? What should I do next? Should I continue living with him while he figures this out? Should I go on a long holiday somewhere else while he figures this out? Should I leave him for good once and for all? Yeah, like this comment says, it's a freak out. Go on holiday, find yourself for a while. There's really no coming back from that level of letting you down, in my opinion. Cancelling a wedding and withdrawing from an engagement is not to be taken lightly. Yeah, definitely. And like the top comment says, go on the honeymoon alone. Let him work through his problems by himself. Sounds like you were just blindsided. He can get therapy, but holding his hand while you bleed out is not a fair ask. No, definitely not. But yeah, I do feel like you need to get out of there, OP. That's so sad. But yeah, I don't feel like you can really be with them anymore, can you? This comment says, don't take him back. Go on your vacation and grieve and figure out what disentangling your life looks like. This man is not capable of being your partner in any way that'll benefit you in the long run. Get out of there now. The next one is called I-21 female caught my friend 21 female kissing my husband's 25 male neck while I was asleep. Okay, this is going to be the last one for today. My husband and I have been married for two years together for three. This just happened about five years ago and I'm not sure how to feel or what to believe. For context, my friend comes over to drink and hang out every once in a while and when she does, we let her sleep in the guest room so she doesn't have to drive home drunk. Last night, we all decided to watch a movie in bed. I fell asleep after maybe an hour. At about 4am, I felt them both move off the bed, so it woke me up. My husband said he went to go and get water, and my friend said she had to use the bathroom. After they got back onto the bed, I was awake, but with my eyes closed. I noticed the movie got louder, and then I heard a kissing noise. I turned over slowly, and I saw my friend caressing my husband from behind, and giving him kisses on his neck while he watched the movie. Oh! Once she realised I saw her, she froze, quickly moved her hands, and we stared at each other for a good 30 seconds. Eventually, I asked her what was going on. She swore that it was nothing and that 
nothing happened. My husband initially said the same. After about an hour and a half for the truth, he told me that he didn't know the kisses were for him and that he froze and didn't know what to do. Oh no, get rid of both of them, OP. When I asked him why it took him so long to tell me the truth, he said it was because he was afraid of how my friend would react. I don't know if I should believe him or not. No, definitely not. She kissed him twice that I know of and he has a history of lying to me. Oh my God. <laughs> no, you don't need either of these people, OP. My friend was quiet the whole time I was trying to get the truth out of my husband. Eventually, I told her to leave my house. She left and my husband got upset at me for being mad at him for what happened. What? Personally, I think that he shouldn't have let it get to that point in the first place. He said that she caught him by surprise, but eventually confessed that she first rubbed him on his back and told him it's okay. After that, she sat directly behind him, hugged him from behind and started to kiss him on the neck multiple times. He said that she was probably just comforting him because she noticed he was upset because him and I have been having issues lately. I feel like they both have fault. She was insanely wrong for doing that and he was wrong for letting her. I don't know. He says I messed up for getting mad at him and not her, which is not true. I'm mad at both of them. I'm not sure how to go about this. Part of me wants to call it quits, but the other half of me feels bad for not believing him. Edit, he's now claiming that she essayed him and he's not pressing charges. Edit number two, thank you for all the overwhelming love and support. We've mutually decided that this relationship is not the best to continue. I appreciate every single one of you that have left a comment giving me support, advice and love. Hopefully the next chapter of my life will be a better one. Yeah, like this comment says, Gil, your husband and your friend are having an affair, point blank. He laid out every single cheap trick in the book. Stonewalling, deflection, he was upset and you're falling for it. Do you know the level of audacity it takes for your friend to start making out with your husband in the same bed as you? She would have never tried that if they didn't have an established relationship. Yeah, definitely get rid of both of them. And I know that's what's happening, but oh, OP, that's awful. Yeah, I'm so happy you're not staying with somebody like that, OP. That's disgusting. And also disgusting quote unquote friend as well. I, 28 male, don't know how to support my girlfriend in her 27 female passion that she's terrible at. We've been together for almost three years now and for the most part the relationship is lovely but there's an increasingly large part of her life which is causing issues. Writing. My girlfriend always tells me about how much she loves writing though she doesn't write professionally it's always been a hobby of hers and it's one that she takes a lot of pride in. She's even been starting to write some rough drafts of a light novel recently and she enjoys every second of it. The problem? Her writing is the worst I've ever seen from somebody our age bar none. Now I don't claim to be a good writer whatsoever. I've seen plenty of fantastic writing and I'm well aware that I could never produce anything remotely close to that. In general though, I'm at least able to write at a competent level. It's not perfect or great, but it gets the job done. Her writing on the other hand is incredibly difficult to read, even at a basic level. Punctuation is seemingly random. There are paragraph long sentences without a comma inside. Tenses change over and over in the middle of a thought without any warning. The vocabulary is never beyond a middle school level, which causes the entire thing to read like a seventh grade English assignment. And to clarify, she is a native English speaker, so this isn't due to the language itself being uncomfortable for her. The content is also meandering, seemingly jumping from one idea to the next with no rhyme or reason. Again, if you were to read it, you'd just assume that a preteen child wrote it. I don't mean to spend this much space belittling her work, but I feel like I need to drive home that this isn't just some little issue of personal preference. It's really as close to objectively poor writing as you can get. Further confounding the issue is the fact that she's extremely proud of all her writing. She talks over and over about how she's a writer and claims that it's one of her greatest skills. She's turned it into a major part of her identity. She constantly asks me to proofread pieces of her novel and I don't even know what to do. Oh, okay, I see the issue now. I've tried basically rewriting the whole thing and I've tried to be more hands-off, only marking a few punctuation changes in there, knowingly leaving in countless errors. When I do the former, she seems to be genuinely hurt, asking me what was wrong with the original that she showed me. When I do the latter, I feel like I'm basically lying to her about one of the things that she cares most about. She loves to show people her writing and I hate saying this, feel incredibly embarrassed when she does. I can see their confused expressions as they give her a cursory, wow, this is great, which she always takes to heart. She's an incredibly kind and loving person, so no one in her life can bring themselves to tell her the truth, knowing it would shatter her happiness and self-esteem. And the biggest problem of all, she's going to be self-publishing her work soon. If somebody buys her novel and leaves a review, she'll be devastated when she reads it. I've tried to subtly hint that maybe she should learn more about grammar and punctuation, just to make her writing even better. I've told her that reading more herself might be a great idea and maybe she can learn some new words to use in her novel. But whenever I surface these ideas, her interest is practically zero. I have no idea what to do here. Some days I just want to be honest with her and tell her that she should really learn some fundamentals of writing before trying to publish something. But at the end of the day, I just want her to be happy. I feel like no matter what, she's going to have to face this truth, whether from me or somebody reading her novel and 
giving an honest review. How can I support her while not supporting her misconception about her abilities? Wow, that's a hard one. When I first started reading this, I thought, oh, you know, you're being super mean. But yeah, you're right. It's a different story if they're going to start publishing it. Because if they were just doing it as a hobby and they weren't publishing it, then like it doesn't really matter because they're having fun. But yeah, I get what you mean now because somebody who reads it, like the general public, they're 100% going to tell the truth. Also, it is a bit weird that they feel like they can publish it without learning anything. Like, come on, surely not. It's a bit much to not really know anything about writing and then be like, oh, I'm going to publish my novels. Like, yeah, surely at least learn the fundamentals. The top comment says directed towards a writing class or a group. It can be a fun way to pursue a hobby and along the way she might get lucky to get some honest criticism. She'll probably also encounter some equally terrible writing and that might be a wake-up call for her. Yeah, that's a good idea if they're interested in it. Yeah, wow, that's a tough one. Also, it's not really on you, OP, if they are super, super, super sensitive. Like, I don't feel like you or somebody else telling them that it is pretty bad. I don't feel like that should break their heart, you know? They should probably be prepared for that. Yeah, also like this comment says, she needs an editor. Real writers and professional writers have editors. Maybe she needs to start the search for hers. Either they'll help her produce something saleable or they'll tell her the harsh truth. Either way, the blood isn't on your hands. Just keep being supportive. Okay, I'm starting to see why so many people make videos on here. Post number two is called My Boyfriend 27 Male. Seems to think that I, 26 female, have to care and be sad about his cheating. Oh, ew. Yeah, some of these are going to be so bad. He told me he cheated and started crying and all. I wasn't surprised as he does something stupid every time we have any disagreements. Honestly, all I felt was a big relief. I'd been thinking about telling my family about him, but I dodged a bullet. It had ended up in a big embarrassment, but now they'll never know he even exists. Of course, it does extinguish any attraction I have towards him, and I'd never marry him, but the apology gift is very nice and I don't care enough to ruin that for myself. But besides that, I'm launching a new business soon and this is not the time to be emotional or break up and move out and take revenge, etc. My job and this business are going to mean a whole lot more to me in a year, even five years, than any of this nonsense. To me, being at peace and getting along well at home is more important right now. So I've been cool, gracious and focused on work. However, he keeps constantly disturbing me during the day asking why I don't care, if I'm not jealous of him, how sad he is, etc. He keeps taking jabs at me too, which does actually irritate me. I feel like he wants me to feel as low as he does, but I don't get it. If you make a mistake, why would someone letting you off easy be a problem? Wait, so are you still with them or not? Please tell me you're not OP. Don't even talk to them anymore, OP. I'm assuming they're not together anymore. But yeah, that's so awful. And there's nothing wrong with the reaction that you're having, OP. Obviously, you haven't been together long. And you're like, well, I don't need them. You know, see you later. Like, why would you fight for somebody who's going to betray you? Yeah, you wouldn't. The top comment says, sounds like he almost wanted the validation of feeling important in the way of getting an extreme reaction and showing how much you cared even if you broke up with him immediately. Not really sure why you'd bother staying with him, though. He's a cheater, he's self-pitying, and he sounds rather desperate. Sounds like more of a hassle than it's worth. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> like, that's not even a question. They've literally failed to do the bare minimum as a partner. Why the hell would you want to be with somebody like that? I'm assuming they're not, but yeah, you don't need them, OP. Wow, this subreddit is wild. Post 3 is called, I didn't invite my stepsister Bully to my wedding. And my father is saying that he's not going either. My father remarried when I, 25 female, was 14. His wife, Mary, 49 female. And his stepdaughter, Kyla, 26 female. What hell in my life? My father is wealthy, so we used to go to a fancy school. Kyla was very mean to me, and I had a hard time to the point that I had to move to another school because I couldn't take it anymore. Once she convinced my father and Mary that I was pregnant, it was so embarrassing because I was still a virgin. And yet she and Mary convinced my father that I should do a pregnancy test. After it came negative, she told some of her friends at school, she was one year ahead of me, that I had an abortion. The bullying was non-stop. She would do anything to make my life miserable. Once she paid a guy at school to start a rumor that I had oral diddly with him during class. Oh God. When I was already going to another school, she told everybody at my school that I left because I was caught stealing at the mall and I was in a youth detention center. My parents had split custody, so I used to spend one week with my father and one with my mom. After two years of hell, I told my father that I'm not going to be staying at his place anymore and our relationship was reduced to two weekends a month. My relationship to my father was non-existent during college days. He would send me money and call me once every month and that was it. I went to his house one or two times during my five years in college. I started dating my fiance Lewis, 26 male, four years ago and I only introduced him to my father after more than two years of relationship. I'm getting married this spring and we're going to get married at the beach in another country in Europe. Both families are wealthy and we decided to offer the stay at the hotel to our guests and they'll pay only their tickets. Because of that, we decided to settle on a small number of guests, around 80. And of course, Kyla is not one of them. The wedding plan started three months 
months ago and my father knew that I wasn't going to invite Kyla. However, he flipped out now and said that I need to invite her. I said that I'm not going to invite a person that I don't have one single good memory with to such a big day. We've been fighting about it since then. This last week he told me that I shouldn't count on his money if Kyla isn't invited and my mum said fine I'll pay for everything then. After that he said that he's not coming to the wedding without Kyla and I replied fine. My grandma and aunt are trying to convince me to invite Kyla for the good sake of our family but to be honest I'm not even sure if we are a family. Should I invite her knowing that this is one of the biggest days in my life and she still makes me angry? No definitely not OP. And also with how the father is acting who cares if they come either? Like the top comment says don't invite. The last thing you need is the fear that she'll say something and upset your beautiful day. And she will. Your dad can stay away too. He never supported you when you lived with him or ever after you moved on. Other family members can think and say what they like. They won't remember who attended the wedding weeks after but you'll remember it your entire life. Yeah and like this comment says your dad chose his new wife and stepdaughter over you countless times while you were a teenager. This is just him doing it again. Do not invite her to your wedding. She'd probably spread all the high school gossip to your in-laws. Are you aware that she had an abortion when she was 15 and used to do sexual acts with boys during class? I hope she stopped doing things like that after she went to the youth detention center. If your dad doesn't go because of this, that's his choice. Just like it'll be your choice if you decide to cut him out of your life for good. Yeah, a million percent. If this was Am I the A-hole, I'd be saying that your dad is the A-hole and Kyla, of course. But yeah, it's not like the dad is good in all of this. Like that comment said, your dad's been choosing his new wife and stepdaughter over you for so long. And yeah, why would you want them at your wedding? I know I wouldn't if I were you, OP. And that's not your fault. Post number four is called my boyfriend 24 male. Said that I'd 24 female be a terrible mother. Should I address this? This morning I was a bit annoyed with my partner. The main thing is he always rushes to get ready in the morning and asks me to help with small jobs. For example, he'll ask me, can you pack my lunch? Can you make me a coffee? While he's rushing around getting ready for work. I'm fine doing these things occasionally, but I also work full time and I need to get ready myself. This morning we both needed to shower at the same time. I let him go first. When I needed to brush my teeth, he was in the bathroom. I couldn't get myself ready, so I decided to go into the kitchen and finish making his breakfast and make him a cup of tea. When he was done and came to sit next to me and eat his food, he asked me, can you pack my lunch? At this point, I was a little annoyed and I said, why can't you do it? I still have to go get ready. To which he got annoyed at and said, just do it. Stop complaining. I don't need to hear this right now. Oh, bro, she's not your mum. Are you your partner's child? Do it yourself. And if you are asking for help, definitely don't be bloody rude about it. This is where I got even more annoyed and I added, you don't even do anything for me. I asked you to make a grocery list yesterday and you never even did it. For context, I always work one or more hours than him every day. I asked him to help out with that because he finished at four and has spare time after work, whereas I usually finish at six. At this point, he got really mad and it escalated to him saying, I'm ruining his morning on purpose and making him late to work. He capped it off by saying, I'm going to be a terrible mum because I'm complaining about stuff like this. Oh, the audacity. This really hurt my feelings and I told him this. He repeated that it was true. I'd be a crap mum and that I should just suck it up and do things without complaining, especially in the morning, which is ruining his work day. Oh no, OP, that's not true. Bro, you're being so difficult. It's not your partner's fault that you're being awful. Imagine saying to your partner that they're trying to ruin your work day after they just bloody made you breakfast. Get out of here. I really wasn't trying to ruin his work day. Yeah, of course, OP. I admit I was being snarky, but I truly didn't think he would get so mad. I thought it would be okay if I comment my opinion without him being so upset. I'm concerned because I feel like his response was so hurtful and I can't get that comment out of my mind. It really hurt my heart to hear my partner of nine years say something like that. He thinks it's fine because it was in the heat of the moment. I don't really know if it was me who was in the wrong because I see his point in ruining the morning, but I'm also quick to blame myself and I already feel myself pushing away what he said, but damn it hurt to hear that. OP, absolutely none of this says that you're going to be a terrible mum. There's no reason that you would be a terrible mum. Your partner sounds like they don't know how to regulate their emotions and they also have wild expectations of you. Like you being a mother to your child in the future doesn't mean that you should be a mother to your partner and them telling you to just do it and don't complain and then saying that you ruined their morning. And what, you're telling me they're not apologizing? That's some lame ass behavior. Sorry, this one sort of struck a chord with me because I've known guys like this and I've known guys who think they're super manly because they act like this. Like bro, being a good man doesn't mean that you're rude to your partner and you expect them to do everything for you. That's actually kind of the opposite of being like a good, strong, mature man. The top comment says he capped it off by saying, I'm going to be a terrible mum. Translation, you're being a bad mummy to me right now by not doing everything.
everything for me. Red flag, run. Also, oh for me complaining this morning. You're a frog in boiling water, friend. You weren't complaining by observing that he doesn't do a damn thing to help you while expecting you to caretake him. Facts are facts. Yeah, and the expectation that you should just do it and shut up. That's so gross. Post number five is called my husband of 16 years is having a baby and it's not mine. I, 46 female, have lived with my husband, 48 male, for over 20 years, married for 16 and we have two kids, 16 and 9. One year ago, he decided that he had enough of family life and went to live with his parents for some time. He was behaving like a bachelor for the entirety of his stay with them, found a girlfriend and was drunk constantly. He had used alcohol before, but we never had much problems around it. He also spent a lot of his time playing games with friends on his computer. What are we reading? One year ago, he informed me that he found a girlfriend and was ready to move out of our apartment and cut ties, although he didn't quite do that. He left me, making close to minimum wage, to care for our two kids and also left a collection of unpaid bills going back months. After that, I fell into a depressive episode that lasted two months and my two close friends got me out of it. About three months after he left as he came back, well, not really, he started coming to our city, hanging out with the kids again and also me, inviting me out for drinks and dinner. All was going well and my 16 year old went on a week long trip with him. For a while, all was going well. He said that the girlfriend was a lie and he just needed some time away to clear his head. Last night, I sent him a good night love you text as I usually do, but in the morning he replied with, I don't deserve your love. I'm about to become a dad again. I'm sorry. I later called him to ask what he meant by that and he told me that he has a girlfriend in another country who's pregnant with his kid. She plans to keep it and he wants to cut ties with me and our kids to care for that child. Yeah, they don't deserve your love, OP. I don't know what to do. I requested divorce, but he declined saying that he wasn't ready. But what, he's ready to betray and abandon you and your kids? Can anybody give me advice regarding this situation? Can I divorce him anyway, even though he doesn't want to? Is there any way I can secure payments to my kids? Since my only job, I can barely make ends meet for the basics. I do some odd jobs here and there, but that's not enough. Yeah, like the top comment says, speak with an attorney ASAP. He doesn't want a divorce because he doesn't want to help with the kids. File for divorce and request child support and alimony. That is so wild, OP. What sort of a person would do that? Yeah, also this comment. Jesus, one of the worst things I've read in a while. Why the hell do these men that have children outside of their marriage choose to just abandon their previous children and family? Like, okay, you're already a disgusting individual that let your family down, but why choose to punish them even more by abandoning them? What a disgusting excuse of a man. Yeah, pretty much. And also this one. It's already wild to me that you allowed him to come back and went to go get drinks with him and sent him good night, I love you texts, etc. After he abandoned you and your two kids and left you with his debt, divorce should have happened a year ago. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, all the comments are saying it too, but you need a divorce lawyer ASAP OP. Oh, can't get over that. How awful. Post number six is called my 32 male wife, 40 females, daughter, suddenly called me dad and I don't know how to react. I, 32 male, have been married to Rose, 40 female, for four years and we dated for two before that. Rose has a daughter, Lola. She's nine. Her father, John, 42 male, is quite present in her life and is a good dad. He lives two hours away due to his work, but he spends a lot of time with her during the weekends and holidays and they do video chat a lot. He comes to all of her school plays and sports events, etc. When I started dating Rose, I didn't know what my relationship with Lola would be. I've had both a stepmother and a stepfather, so I know this kind of relationships can get bad easily. So I tried to do my best. I played with her. I listened to her whenever she wanted to talk, helped her if she needed help and I didn't set any rule, but I made sure that she followed Rose's rules. In the past six years, we definitely bonded. Something happened yesterday. She aced a math test, the only full score in the whole class. Am I allowed to be proud of her? I will be anyway. I wanted to reward her and she wanted an ice cream. So we went to the ice cream shop. When I gave her the ice cream, she said, thank you, dad, and rushed back into the car. I was stunned. I didn't know how to react. She never called me dad. She normally called me by my name or nickname. She seemed to not realize she'd done it. So I acted normally and I brought her back home and we celebrated with Rose. I don't know what I should do if she calls me dad again. I'm happy about it. Don't misunderstand me. I love her as if she was my own daughter, but she already has a father and they love each other a lot. And I think he wouldn't like hearing her call somebody else dad. Should I tell her something? What should I say? Interesting. This comment's nice. Speaking as a guy who became a little girl's dad when she was 10 or so. Dad is a title like sensei or elder that can't be taken. It can only be bestowed. And when it's bestowed, it's an indication of high regard. Take it as such and accept it as an honor that she thinks of you in that way. It's not an exclusive title that only one person can hold. You may wish to have a conversation with Lola or Rose may wish to have a conversation with her about how John might feel if he knows, so she can be sensitive to that. Yeah, I don't feel like it's an issue, OP. Probably talk to Rose about it, though. Okay, I feel like that's enough for today. That was a 
a really fun first episode, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. Let's read something wholesome. This aquarium is also a wedding venue, and the beluga whales love photo bombing. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> the photos are so nice. Like, hey, congratulations. I love how happy they look, too. So cute. Me, cooks anything. My boyfriend. Oh, that's so nice. This is the most beautiful thing I've ever tasted in my life, and it's something super basic, but you can taste the love. I'd love to crack one of these bad boys open right now. Yeah, those sorts of books were so awesome. They had like a world of information in them. And they were also interesting too. Might have to get some of these. I just spent so long prying my step-grandmother's locket open. And it was 100% worth it. Oh, that's so cute. The little dog and the cat in there. If I had a locket, it'd be all the kitty cats. That's so sweet. And the fact that they're pets and not people. There's also something kind of wholesome about that. Just because you carry it so well, doesn't mean it's not heavy. Yeah, wow. How true is that? You should be very proud of yourself guys. Do you want to watch a movie? No. Do you want to watch 20 minutes of a movie and then fall asleep on the couch? You know me so well. Oh, the dino comics are so good. How did you know? So cute. Simple things become special when we do them together. Oh, yeah. And you really start to enjoy the little things. That's so beautiful and a beautiful place to end the episode. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Lauren. I finally caught one of these at release. Have been on and off sleeping because dog has been sick all night. So smiling to see this. You're such a bright spot on YouTube. Aww. And our community makes me laugh. Aww. And also feel unity as we facepalm at weirdos. Thank you, Vinci. Aww, thank you for such an awesome comment. That's so nice. And yeah, our community on the channel is definitely a bright spot on YouTube. And it's growing every day. How awesome is that? Thank you for the support. That means so much. And with that being said, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful Beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!